Okay guys, today I'm just going to give you a brief rundown on uh, my 3D printing hardware and software that I use when I'm doing my 3D prints. Okay, let's just go ahead and start with the hardware. Alright. As you can see here, we have an AMD A10-7700K. It's got the Radeon R7 integrated graphics. Uh, it has a total of 10 compute cores, which would be 4 CPU and 6 GPU cores. I have this overclocked on all cores to 4 GHz. Uh, we have 8 GB of DDR3 memory. I believe it's 2133 MHz. Okay, let's go into Device Manager here and I'll show you that uh, second GPU I have. Uh, we're using the integrated uh, R7 graphics and I also have a secondary graphics card that's an R7 250 uh, to take advantage of dual graphics for a little more performance. Okay. Um, obviously storage is a uh, is a thing uh, you need to be able to store all your STL files they're not huge but you know over time they will add up so make sure you have yourself a decent amount of storage alright so let's let's move on to the software now uh, I use a program called Yawcam uh, yet another webcam it is free software this allows me to actually stream uh, the webcam that is hooked to the 3D printer uh, directly to uh, my website. Okay, so I'm using a Logitech HD webcam C615. I keep its controller open as well for zoom and pan features. Okay, that way if I need to zoom in when I'm doing a print, we can do so. All right, so that wraps up the cam. So we've got a, a C615. Uh, we're using Yaw Cam to broadcast this to the website. Uh, this is what uses the resources. Yawcam is Java based and Java is a hog on resources. So um, right now you can see my CPU usage is around 70%. Uh, keep in mind uh, this machine is being team viewed right now. Team viewer itself uses about 30%. That's why it looks a little rough on the CPU right now. Okay, so uh, as far as my printing software, I actually use MakerBot. Uh, for a long time I used Replicator G and I absolutely loved it. Uh, but it just, I was having some print issues, just odd sporadic issues, and I, I figured out uh, after contacting support that Replicator G is known to have those issues. It's a very old splicing program. So I moved to MakerBot. It's not quite as friendly as Replicator G in my, my opinion, not as many feature sets, but in some of the newer versions of Replicate, or uh, sorry, MakerBot, uh, they have added some better settings features. Let's go over a couple of those with you. Um, if you're new to 3D printing, uh, maybe some of these settings will help you out. I'm not an expert by any means. This is just trial and error that I've learned. Okay, I am printing with ABS. So I have my extruder temperature set to 230 degrees Celsius. Uh, and I have two extruders. So I would m set each extruder to whatever temperature I wanted. I'll get into how to change your extruders uh, here momentarily. The platform temperature on ABS we're going to go around 110. Um, you know, mileage may vary on that. You may have to go plus minus five uh, degrees Celsius or so to to get a stable, nice stick, but not melting your first couple uh, layers. Okay, travel speed. Yet again, that's going to be dependent on your uh, printer. Uh, I use 150 millimeters a second. Okay. Let's move on over here to the extrusion speeds. I have not messed with a lot of these. Most of these are defaults um, to MakerBot. It does a very good job. Okay. You can see that my first layer is set to 50 millimeters, a, or sorry, my first layer is set to 30 millimeters a second. If I'm using a, a raft, I'm going to get 50 millimeters a second. The bridges, well, those are 40 millimeters a second, but if you really want to do better bridges, you're probably going to want to slow it down a little more than that. Um, Four surface fills, your infill. Uh, so my basic printing speed, my basic infill speed is 90 millimeters a second. The travel speed um, that we just looked at in the previous tab, uh, basically what that means is the time it takes to move uh, when it's not actually extruding plastic, but it's moving the tip from one point to another further away before it starts to extrude the plastic again. That's the travel speed. Okay, so on down we can see our raft speeds, our outline speeds. Um, your outline speed you want to be a little slower um, it's you want it to stick really well and the slower you print the better it's going to stick okay 
uh, roof, uh, the roof surface fills, the roof, uh, the sparse roof surface fills. Okay, uh, like I said, most of this is default. Okay, when we move down to infill, this is things that you're going to want to want to think about when you're printing. Uh, infill density is basically the amount of plastic it's going to use inside of the item. Okay, so for instance, if you wanted a completely hollow item, you'd put zero percent infill. Now there are disadvantages to this. If your software doesn't um, splice your your items properly, oh sorry, or depending on the uh, the shape of your item, uh, zero infill may be a bad idea. Also, uh, you don't want to go too far the other way. If you go 100% infill, not only are you going to use a lot of plastic, uh, the problem there is there is so much heat involved when you're printing a solid form. There's so much hot plastic that it will begin to warp. Uh, and and you know that's it just gets really ugly really quick. Uh, my standard is 10% as you can see on the screen. Uh, the infill layer height that is how thick of each uh, each layer that you, sorry that's how thick you want each layer to be. Okay, I use a 0.27. My my printer I believe is capable of a 0.1. Uh, keep in mind this uh, greatly increases the the print time on your prints. It will make a finer finished product because. Uh, your layers are going to be smaller, so um, there's going to be significantly more layers uh, to get to your overall height uh, using a 0.1 than a 0.27, okay? Uh, but it will be a much better quality. So as far as quality goes, you want to go for the lower. Uh, you want to look at your printer specs, uh, but like a 0.1 would be on the best. And my nozzle is a 0.4, so a 0.4 would be my, my worst, okay? So I printed a 0.27. Um, which turns out pretty good for me. I don't need anything that's super smooth. And you can always uh, take some sandpaper and finish your products too. Okay, then you have the infill pattern. I use a diamond fast, but as you can see, they give quite a few different options. All right, let's move on to the model properties. Yet again, I have not changed a lot of these settings. They're default. Uh, the number of shells will be how many outlines it makes around the item before it begins to uh, put the infill in. Layer height, yet again, just refers to the infill height, uh, which we just saw in the last tab. Uh, the roof thickness is just going to be how thick it makes the, uh, the the top of your print at the very top when it covers all your infill up. Uh, keep in mind, if you had a layer height of 0.4, which would be the maximum for my nozzle, it would have to print two top layers to equal the 0.8. Okay, right now it's it's printing roughly three and it's smushing one pretty good. Okay, so same with the floor thickness, same concept as the roof. Okay, uh, coarseness, I'm not all that familiar with what that actually, uh, there you go, features smaller than, than this area, square millimeters are removed. Okay, so if, if you have smaller than that size, they will not even attempt to print it. Okay. Uh, I have not messed with these other settings, and to be honest, I really do not understand what they mean, so we're just going to leave those alone. Okay, multi-material printing. I believe... Mixed material, I believe this would be if you're... Like, like I said, my unit's a dual extruder, so as two extruders, I could actually run two colors, or in certain instances, I could run two different types of material. I could run an ABS and a PLA, um, in each extruder and these are settings to, to make you be able to print with the ABS and the PLA uh, at the same time without having uh, you know significant issues with it bonding okay let's go ahead and move to raft. Raft's very important if you're having a problem getting your items to stick to the bed uh, so it, it makes a big difference on larger items the larger item you print the more chances you'll have of the edges curling so you want to stay away from the curling it'll mess up the the print pretty bad Okay, so all these settings will refer to um, your raft, which I have disabled because most of the time I print small items. Okay, uh, raft to mold spacing. You've got the raft margin, uh, which is just going to be how far out I believe it comes from the edges. Um, the minimum base gap. Okay, I don't know what a lot of these settings mean. I yet again somewhere I use defaults. As I said, I'm pretty new to this. I'm no expert. Okay, so. Interface layers, yet again, new stuff for me, surface layers. Uh, when a raft prints, it prints out, uh, depends on the slicing program you're using, but it'll print out a very 
light, almost wavy uh, layer, and then it'll go ahead and print out a uh, hatch pattern on top of it in most cases. Uh, like I said, that just depends on your slicer and how it lays it out. But this is, uh, I believe, the surface layer shells would be the amount of outer shells that it's putting on the final layer before it starts your actual item print. Okay, uh, number of surface layers, there are going to be two of them, uh, is what this is set to. So your raft will be like three to four layers thick. Uh, this is going to provide for good adhesion to your bed. Okay, going to move on to supports and bridging. Okay, uh, when you have items that are shaped very uh, oddly um, and have a lot of overhangs, such as let's take for instance a uh, figurine with an arm hanging out and a sword in his hand. Okay, when it goes to print that arm and that sword, it's going to need some support, or it, the, the plastic's just going to drop to the bed. Okay, so uh, you would enable support. There's also uh, settings for this in the quick settings. Um, you, you'd enable support. That way, it'll actually print some. It'll actually print some structures under that arm in order to uh, to support that arm while it prints. Uh, the things about printing with support and raft, you have to remember is there is a lot of cleanup involved afterwards because you know the plastic does bond to each other so you have to go back and you have to break it off and then you have to take some some sandpaper or a small file to it to clean it up a little bit okay uh, these settings are just gonna uh, refer to the support that you're using uh, the density of the support uh, the margin yet again how how far out it goes from the side of the object um, uh, your bridge, uh, bridging, you can set a maximum bridge length. Um, remember, when it's creating a bridge, just as it sounds, it's moving from one solid supported point to another solid supported point with a large gap in between. Uh, when doing bridging, you have to have your settings just right, your temperatures just right, or you will get a poor print. Okay. I believe 80 millimeters is the default on, um, on MakerBot. So... I also have bridging disabled at the moment. Okay, and now we have our settings for each individual extruder. Okay, I have, like I stated, I have two extruders. Uh, I have the right extruder and the left extruder. So you can do, uh, oh gracious, dual color or dual material prints. Okay, uh, you can see my my filament di diameter is uh, one point seven seven millimeters. Uh, the retraction distance, let's see if it gives us a little... Okay, length of filament retracted before travel moves. So, uh, if, if it's extruded uh, too much out of the end, it will pull it back into the nozzle before it moves so it doesn't create a significant strain across your item as it's moving. Uh, also, retraction speed is how quick it's going to be able to retract that. Uh, restart speed, okay, this is something I don't know here. Extrusion rate when the extruder restarts after a retraction. Okay, this is how quick the extruder will start uh, extruding again after it has retracted. Okay, uh, more uh, retraction distance and speed settings. We're going to find the same thing on our left extruder. Okay, so you can you can independently set your extruders. This this is very important if you're using um, different uh, different filaments. Uh, you know, like an ABS and a PLA at the same time. Okay, so you can also look at your quick tab. You know, you can you can set them up like a extruder specific. Set up for ABS, uh, PLA. This will change some of the settings. You can also change, uh, you know, your temperatures through this quick panel, your infill percentage, your number of shells, and your layer height. Uh, you can add raft and support right here. Okay, I do want to go back here to the, um, see if we can find the temperature settings. I believe that the extruder would be your right extruder and then the extruder left would be the temperature for your left extruder. Uh, this is where you'd have to make some changes um, if you're doing mixed printing. Mixed printing can get a little tricky uh, when using ABS and PLA because um, ABS does re require a much higher bed temp of 110 Celsius, uh, as to PLA is about 60 Celsius, okay? So uh, it's going to be very hard if you're printing a base layer with ABS at 110 Celsius. Uh, 
and you also have PLA touching the base because the PLA will start to warp significantly at that temperature. Okay. Also, I do believe, I don't do a lot of printing in PLA, but I do believe PLA has a much lower print temperature as well. Okay, so keep that in mind if you're going to try to do mixed printing. Okay, so I mean, in general, um, that's the settings section of this. Uh, let's let's see, I've got a couple items on the bed here. Let's see if I can pull my window down a little bit and get us just a little more of you. There we go, zoom out just a little bit. A couple real small items on the bed. I can hold right click and maneuver the window around, okay? So when doing this, uh, you can see all angles of the item. You can also click that and you can move the item either by dragging it or I believe the, nope, directional keys do not work, I apologize. So yeah, you just drag it to wherever you want it on the bed. Okay, so you can move your items around that way. I do believe MakerBot actually supports adding multiple STL files to the same workspace. So you'd go up here and you click add file, add whatever file you wanted to. Okay. Okay, so here's a rotation. So say you don't have it aligned, uh, you know, the way you want. Let's say your item's not printing on the right side. It's printing on the top and you want to change it. All you got to do is hit your rotation button. And then you can actually rotate it. It'll give you the amount of degrees it's actually rotating. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit here. I want to cooperate with me. Like I said, I am new to MakerBot, and most of the time, just in my uh, actual printing software, I will uh, set it up the way I need it on the bed automatically. Because I'm not finding a way to flip this over. All right, anyhow, on with the show. So down here, we're going to move to the next block. Okay, this is going to be to scale them. So let's say you made your item one inch by one inch. We can now drag and we can significantly increase the size. There you go. Now you got some monsters there. Let's see now that I can get a better hold on it. Let's see if I can rotate it a little better. Now it still doesn't want to rotate. I'm going to have to look into that. I haven't used the rotate feature on here a lot. Okay, so down here is the section where you're going to choose. Uh, basically, if you have a dual extruder, what extruder you want to set it to. Okay, so we're going to click on this, and we can select right extruder, or we can select left extruder. Okay, and you can actually go into the settings, and you can set what colors you want to represent what. Uh, for now, these are the colors I have in my machine, so the left extruder will uh, show in red, and the right extruder will show in white, whitish gray, whatever color you want to call that. Okay, so <clears throat> this is how you differentiate. If you have multiple items on the same bed, and you want different items to print different uh, different colors you would select the item and then you would then select the extruder and you would select whichever uh, color you wanted so let's say here's our first item we want it to print with the left extruder let's say we have a second item on the bed we're gonna highlight that item and then we're gonna print it with the right extruder and you can see that it's gonna print each of those in the setup extruder color okay Let's see, anything else? We've got the uh, the preview window up here, which is very uh, very helpful. Uh, it's got to write the G-code right now. It's got to do the slice, so give it a second here. All right. Basically, what this preview is going to do is it's going to tell you about how much uh, material you're going to have to use, and it's going to tell you the, the estimated print time. Okay, you can also... Uh, show your travel moves that's pretty handy you can look at each layer uh, the way it will be printed okay I do apologize my machine is pretty pretty uh, bogged down at the moment uh, team viewer really does whoop it uh, okay so if you move it slow you can actually see you can actually see the uh, layers as they're being made and it'll show you you know where the tips moving and uh, all the passes over in order to get your item to the top layer it's also helpful because it'll give you an overall layer count um, let's go ahead, and, go ahead and move him back around here wow my machine's not liking this too much Okay, there you go. It'll show you roughly, you know, uh, how it's going to print. 
uh, okay, and it's the the big importance. The only reason I ever opened this window, to be honest with you, is to look at the estimated time. Now, keep in mind this estimated time does not include the time it takes to uh, heat up your bed and extruder. That is one thing I significantly miss about Replicator G. Is I actually had a a toolkit to where I could go in and I could manually tell the printer to start heating the extruder and the bed before I even attempted to import and start trying to uh, uh, to slice um, my STL file. Uh, I could actually be working on designing my file while the printer was preheating, uh, which I guess in essence I could still walk over to the printer, tell it to preheat, come back over, do my work, and uh, then I could start this and it wouldn't have to start from these low temperatures because it would already have a preheat on it. But it was just much handier in Replicator G with that toolkit. Uh, I have yet to find an actual toolkit inside of MakerBot to do the same thing. Um, I could also, you know, uh, change my speeds on the go and things like that, uh, which I kind of miss. But uh, don't get me wrong, MakerBot has much, much nicer looking prints. Uh, and they're much uh, stronger prints. They bond better layer to layer uh, than Replicator G did. So you take the good with the bad, I guess, right? Okay, well, I think, you know, that's basically going to be the rundown. Um, you got MakerBot for the printing software itself. Oh, I, I do apologize. Let me show you just roughly how to... Uh, let's uh, let's say we've got uh, something we already printed. Uh, and you could just, you know, delete the item off the bed by hitting the delete key and adding a new file. Okay. Or you can go up here uh, and you can go file new and it's going to give you a new untitled document and then you can add your file to that okay and that's how you're going to start one out alright guys I think that's uh, that's going to wrap it up for today um, this is just basically what I know about 3D printing so far I, I'm very new to it I do have a low-end printer I'm using free software you know uh, but this might help some people out that had any kind of questions or or needed some ideas on software to use uh, I, I don't know how friendly MakerBot is. I, I know some of the newer versions do not support anything but MakerBot printers. So, so be careful on what version of MakerBot you get. Uh, and I do not know how many printers MakerBot actually supports. I actually have a Quiddy Tech printer, which is a MakerBot uh, uh, clone. So it works absolutely perfectly. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you taking your time to watch. Hey, guys. If you like the video, please like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.